Hi, good morning. We are reading The Mystery of History, Volume 4. We're on page 93. We just finished talking about the Mexican War of Independence, and that was in from 1810 to 1821. And now we're going to talk about the War of 1812, because the War of 1812 took place right during the middle of the Mexican War. So there were two wars going on. Um two wars going on in on the North American continent at the same time because you know we have the United States and I forgot to look up that word viceroy again. I hope we don't come across it. <laughs> because yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that it's viceroy from the shows I watch. So the war uh the war of eighteen twelve was going on over in America. Well, I guess the United States. But then the Mexican War was going on just below. So I didn't ever really realize that those two things, you know, typically when you learn history, you kind of... What war was going on? What was the Mexican War going on? The War of 1812 was... So we have the Mexican War. You know, Mexico is just below the United States, but they're both in North America. So we have the Mexican War going on in Mexico, just below the United States. And then we have the War of 1812 going on in the United States. So two wars going on in North America at the same time. Okay, Miss Hobar says the War of 1812 was a strange war. I say strange, she says strange, because it could have been avoided. It lasted longer than its name would imply. And it failed to solve the issues that started it. So what how, meaning... The reason they started fighting, it, when, when, that, when the war was finished, those reasons were still there. They didn't resolve it. And both sides claimed to have won the war. Now that's funny. I won the war. I won the war. <laughs> you didn't win the war. I won the so war. So once again, it was the United States and Great Britain in these wars. So I guess if you look at the history books in Great Britain, they said they won. But if you look at the history books in the United States, they, we say we won. So that's why it's always important to look at several sources for history because, you know, they all, do you know the saying, there are three sides to every story? There's one person's side, the other person's side, and then there's the truth somewhere in the middle. I believe that America won every war that it's gone to. I think that might not be true, but the only war... That they don't say that they won, but just sort of retreated from was the Vietnam War. Right. Okay, well, let's look at the War of 1812. On the sidelines of this war, if they're on the side, if, if it says France, Canada, and hundreds of American Indians, what does that mean they're on the sidelines, Caleb? They are watching the battle. Yeah. Now, one of the most famous byproducts of this war was the Star Spangled Banner. What does it mean for it to be a byproduct, Cruz? A byproduct of the war. What does that mean? I do not know. It means, if it's a product of something, that means the war produced it. But if it's a byproduct, it means it indirectly produced it. It kind of led to it. It, The war didn't directly produce it. So the Star Spangled Banner was created in the middle of this war and it later became the national anthem for the United States which is our country as some okay so this is some background to the story so we're going back to 1804 when Napoleon Bonaparte declared himself emperor so he declared himself emperor who's that other guy who declared himself emperor I forgot his name already me too uh something coming Gonzalez no um Augustine de Iturbide. That was, he declared himself emperor of Mexico. And he had been ousted by Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. So Napoleon, anyway, Napoleon declared himself emperor in 1804. He was power crazed. And he set his sights on Great Britain, trying to conquer that. He lost his chance in 1805. Because his warships were destroyed at the battle, famous battle of Trafalgar. I have got to learn how to say that word too because that has been a lot in our history book. Having lost that battle, Napoleon schemed another way to attack Great Britain. 
he tried to ruin the trade, their trade on the sea. So, you know, they use their ships to do a lot of trading. So he's trying to ruin that. The problem of this scheme was that the British at this same time in history were at their best in the open sea. So they were really successful. And Napoleon did end up failing, trying to, to uh, ruin their sea trade. The strength of Great Britain's navy made it nearly impossible to stop their trading ships. So their navy was very good at protecting their trading ships. There was another problem. The British weren't the only ones doing business across the ocean. The United States was there as well, <clears throat> trading from one port to another. So picture it, there was a three-way rivalry on the Atlantic Ocean. France, Great Britain, and the United States were all competing for power on the sea, on the ocean. The French tried to block the British ports, the British tried to block the French ports, and the Americans were caught in between. That's so funny. Both the British and the French were prone to stopping U.S. ships to inspect or destroy their cargo. And the British took this rivalry so seriously that they resorted to... Wait, let me guess. They got into another war about it? Uh, well, we'll have to find out. I don't know. You can't really remember. The British took the rivalry so seriously that they hauled away British sailors that they found on U.S. ships. Why were there British sailors on U.S. ships? Well, the truth is, U.S. ships had better conditions than, than British ships, and many British sailors had deserted Great Britain and joined the Americans for a better way of life. Now, remember, this was before um, the country of the United States was really well established. I mean, we, the, you know, we were just getting started. It was just, see, 1776, and when did the war end? Of, I don't even remember. Oh, let's go back. The War of 1812. Not the war. Yeah, this is the War of 1812, but I'm talking about the Revolutionary War. When was the end of that war? I think it was 1789, but let me just see. Wow. Okay, 1783. So... That's 17 plus 12 more years. What's 17 plus 12? 17 plus 12 is 29. So it only been 29 years for them to kind of start organizing their country. So it's still very developing. So what I mean by that is people are still coming over from, from other countries to be a part of the United States without much problem. It's not like today where you come from France to be a part of the United States. You have to jump through a whole bunch of different loops to become a U.S. citizen. That wasn't happening back then because the United States was just getting started. Uh, they needed some citizens. Well, I don't know if that's the reason, but um, it wasn't the same as it is today. So anyway, British sailors were leaving uh, British ships to work on U.S. ships. And how did the British find their defected sailors? They, f they ran a language test. Sure enough, after assaulting, meaning attacking, these U.S. ships, the British forced each of the sailors to repeat certain words that were hard to pronounce without an accent. This was, of course, a poor test. There were some Americans who had, faded, who had fading British accents and were not runaway British soldiers, and they were deported anyway. This, so, a lot of the Americans... So, this was before... Uh, so imagine the British came over and settled colonies not too long ago in the Americas. And a lot of those people passed down, just like y'all speak very close to the way I speak. Y'all aren't from uh, the South. Well, you're not, from as, you're not from North Carolina as I am. But you speak like you are or, uh, close to it because your mother speaks that way. So it's kind of the same um, a lot of the Americans still had 
some British accent because their parents were from Britain or their, their grandparents. Their grandparents spoke to their children and then their parents spoke. So they still had some British accents because this American accent, our American accent, only developed after years of different cultures kind of blending in to all speak English together. And even still today, in the North, the sound of the Northern accent is very different from the sound of the South, depending on who was settling there. Um, so their tests, they're, they're over there, the British are testing, they're like, say this word, say uh, bin, and they're like, bean, no, you're, <laughs> you're British. And he's like, no, I'm American. I've been there all my life. Say been. Been. No. <laughs> We're just cracking our Um, so there, this was not a great test to try to prove whether they were British or not because a lot of the Americans still had British accents. So over the course of a few years, about 6,000 British sailors, which included American sailors, so a lot of those were American sailors that were, they just said, you know, oh no, you're British, were snatched. This high number included George Washington's nephews, who were clearly Americans. See? Though lots of ships were stopped, and many Americans were taken by quote-unquote mistake, there was one particular incident that provoked the War of 1812. So here's what happened. A British ship approached a U.S. warship called the USS Chesapeake. And when the British tried to seize the Chesapeake to inspe- inspect its cargo, the captain of the Chesapeake refused to cooperate, and bullets began flying in all directions. <laughs> and when the air cleared, 20 men had been shot, and some, uh, and it doesn't say, it says dead or wounded, so it doesn't say how many were, had passed away. And four, uh, defected British were taken from the Americans and hanged, and the Americans were outraged. The attack on the Chesapeake led the United States to draft bills and acts against Great Britain. They wanted to establish a fair trade agreement without the British stealing back their sailors. I think I would have done that a long time ago. I don't think we had to wait for bullets to fly. No policies worked, and so the United States under President James Madison, declared war against Great Britain. I wonder how long after that, because this doesn't say when the USS Chesapeake was attacked. So this was in, on June 18th in 1812. Now, the ironic thing is that just days before war was declared, the British had begun to, you, to cooperate with U.S. demands. They're like, wait, just three days ago, we said okay to your, we would cooperate. But it was too late. The British changed their policies now, if the United States has, had known about the policy change, they would not have gone to war. But they didn't know because they didn't have radio back then or telephones or telegraph. And it took weeks for news to travel by letter across the um, Atlantic Ocean. So the war began. It never became an all-out war, but the war was a series of several battles on the land and sea. One of those battles was on board the Chesapeake, the same ship attacked by the British. This was in 1813, and it was a fierce battle between the Chesapeake and the British frigate called the HMS Shannon. Now, James Lawrence, he was the captain of the Chesapeake, declared, Don't give up the ship! And with those dying words, he perished, and shortly after, the British overwhelmed his crew. Other how did he, he perish? It doesn't say. Other battles were fought closer to home, around the Great Lakes and on Canadian soil. Miss Hobar says some of my relatives fought in the Battle of Lundy's Lane. We have we have relatives that were fought in the War of eighteen twelve, as some of yours may have. Yes, we have. Bat- and I don't know exactly, but I can't tell you which ones right now. But I've looked back into our. And it says, uh, Soldier of War of 1812. But one particular campaign involved Chief Tecumseh, 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 
sorry. He was an American Indian Shawnee, a Shawnee American Indian, and he helped the British. So we're going to talk about him. Traitor. We're going to talk about him next time. All right. We got to go. It's been too long. We're on page 95. Farewell.